Boy, if there was ever an argument for not reading the Bible um, literally, um, there's, there it is, right? Otherwise, we'd be, have a lot of eyeless, handless, footless people um, in this world. Where are we going? Where are you leading us? How much longer before we get there? These must have been just a few of the questions that Moses heard over and over and over again from the people during their 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. They knew where they'd been. They knew what they used to have. If only we still had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there's nothing at all but this crummy manna to look at. I added the word crummy, just so you know. God provided that manna for them. Anything but crummy. It's funny how quickly the people had forgotten Um, had forgotten their cries while they were in bondage to Pharaoh. It's funny how quickly God's provisions no longer met their standards and desires. It's funny how often the people's cries for God to provide for them turned to finding provisions for themselves. Let's create our own God and worship at its feet. Let's go back to Egypt, where we at least had meat to eat. Let's not follow Moses anymore. At least the Pharaoh gave us food and shelter. Where are we going, Moses? Where are you leading us? How much longer before we get there? We remember where we were, how it used to be, and then looks a whole lot better than now. Oftentimes, then, does look a whole lot better than now, especially when we're in the middle of traveling to get to now. It's difficult to trust, to loosen our control over situations, to believe in the leadership of the person that's leading them. Moses knew this was a problem before he even approached the Pharaoh for the first time. He said, why me, Lord? I'm not a good speaker. Let my brother lead. You want me to do what, Lord? Lead them where? But people already live there. And let's be honest with ourselves. We're no different from the people raising the ruckus in the text. Where are we going? Where are you leading us? How much longer before we get there? Change is difficult, even when we embrace it and we've asked for it. Change is difficult, especially when we don't know what awaits us in the future. And so oftentimes, it's easier to just hold on to what we've got or pine away for what we used to have when we're traveling and traversing through occurring change. In God's great wisdom for and love for his people, God provides again. First it was with the manna. Now it's with the sharing of God's spirit with 70 plus people in the community. The gift of leadership, which was resting solely on Moses, now rested on many others within the community. If communication was a problem for Moses before, he now had 70 others who would share in communicating where it was that they were going and how they were going to get there. And despite the concern raised 
by Joshua, son of Nun. Moses viewed the sharing of the leadership and God's spirit as not as having taken away from his role as a leader in the group, but as an enhancement of his leadership, a sharing of his leadership, a support of his leadership. What does he say? He says, would that all the people were prophets and that the Lord would put put God's spirit on them, all of them. Seventy plus people sharing in the leadership of the wandering, wandering Israelites. Would that all the people, the Lord's people, were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Fellow members of St. Matthew, God has indeed put God's spirit on all of the Lord's people. Each of us has received God's spirit through the waters of baptism. Each of us in Christ has new life and is a new creation. Each of us are members of the body of Christ and members of this particular body that we call St. Matthew, Evangelical Lutheran Church. Each of us has a share in communicating where we are going and how we're going to get there. And it's important that we continue to share with one another, to communicate with one another, to support one another, to grow with one another, and face the changes together. You called me to be your pastor over two years ago, and I attempt to the best of my ability to lead and cast a vision for where it is that we're going and how it is that we can get there together. You've elected seven others to serve on the Congregation Council. Is that right, seven? Yeah. Sorry. Sometimes things just go, right? You elected seven others to serve on Congregation Council to represent you as leaders and voices of this community. Many, many others of you lead in a particular ministry or serve on a particular committee. Others of you lead by example or share your faith active and love out in the community through other organizations. God, in God's great wisdom, has gifted us each with God's spirit and has given us the gift to be used and has called each of us into leadership, each in our own way and in our own manner. And as we lead and go forward with one another, we are called to support one another, to communicate with one another, and to trust that it is God providing for us and leading us through the entirety of this journey. Over the last couple of years, we've witnessed and been through some changes together. How have we reacted to it? Think for a moment about some of the changes that have occurred this past year. Did the change just happen, or were we instrumental in bringing about that change? Were we faithful in creating this change, making the change in Jesus' name? Did we make the change so that we might live God's love and remain faithful to our mission statement? Did we support one another through the change? Or did we, as the Bible says, put a stumbling block before others and complain about it? Jesus says, whoever is not against us is for us. In other words, the change may not be, have been what you expected or been the way you would have done it or even been something that we like, but it's being done and has been done in service toward God in order to help St. Matthew be a happier and healthier place. And if it's been done that be- in those things, then it's not a bad thing. 
were we supportive. It's better for us to cut off our hand rather than to allow it to make us to stumble. Why, when change happens, or is even just considered, do we fight so hard against it, even when it's being done to grow the church, to grow our faith, to grow new disciples, to be freer, to live God's love as God gives us that ability. And the freedom to live God's love, to serve in new and exciting ways, to share one's gifts that in, in new and exciting ways, these are a large part of the change that has happened these last couple of years as we've encouraged people to serve in ways that they were either never asked or never given the opportunity. We have seven amazing leaders, many of who are new in this capacity, whom you elected to serve on congregation council, who love this church, its people, the ministries that we perform, and who are having those difficult conversations with one another and actively attempting to offer us all guidance in how we treat each other in loving, respectful ways, from how we communicate to how we show support of both our members and our called leadership. We now have two separate mutual ministry committees who serve as the pulse of the congregation and ensure that both the congregation and the called leadership are moving and ministering together. We now have an active property committee, a group of men and women that come together. And we have an active finance committee, a group of people that come together, where many people add their voices and share their gifts with the community rather than have those roles fall solely on one or two people. We came, we came together intergenerationally to tie quilts for children, to help to wash people's laundry, to loom countless hats to share within our community, and gather together and read books together, and study the Bible year-round while enjoying a beverage together, and donate blood in our fellowship hall, and make optimal use of the thriving funds to help support our efforts, and read about it all together in one place on a quarterly basis. We have an updated constitution and bylaws, something that hadn't been done in over 20 years. We have an updated leadership manual. We have archives that are almost in line with the ELCA expectations, as well as easily accessible, because these digital copies have been created. There are now more people serving on the various committees and sharing their gifts than there ever, ever has been. Oh, and over these last two years, we've also welcomed 65 new disciples into the life and ministry of this congregation. Some of you who are sitting here this morning in worship and some of you who are worshiping online. And I'm most likely forgetting things. So please forgive me if I didn't mention something that you're involved in that is new and exciting and has come about these last couple of years. Change, change did this. Change is how, change in how we used to do things, change in encouraging more people to get involved and have the freedom to lead and to serve, change in how we see ourselves as a congregation and how we talk, treat, and support one another as we journey side by side and change of direction as to where it is that we believe God is leading us. I understand we have experienced a lot of change. And as we move forward together, still on this journey together to where it is God is leading us, there will undoubtedly be more change.
But I want to reassure you, just as the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, they didn't wander aimlessly. They knew where they were headed. And it took time to get there. And it took work. And there was grumbling. And there was complaining. And there was, oh, if we could only go back to this. But they didn't because God had bigger plans in store for them. We're on the journey. And journeying takes time. But with all of us serving and leading in all these new exciting ways, we are not traveling together aimlessly. We know where we want to be. We just have to allow ourselves some grace to get there. How will we respond to that? Will we embrace it? Or will we complain about how good it used to be? It's important that we talk about it, that we all talk about it, that we listen to each other, that we have those difficult and important conversations openly and directly, and that we do so in a healthy and respectful way, as the Cultural Collective Letter explained this past week. And it's also important that we attempt, that we at least attempt to trust in the leadership that we have elected and called to lead as we enter into this new change. For although the way they do it might look differently from the way you might do it, they're doing it in the name of Jesus. Whoever is not against us is for us. Amen.